Hi guys, I'm Erica. Welcome to Hack Your Health. I'm going to make a video today about keeping a food journal for digestive and autoimmune symptoms. So this is especially relevant to people who are using diet to help with their autoimmune symptoms. So for example, the specific carbohydrate diet or the autoimmune paleo diet and there are some other similar diets out there. So I thought I would just make a video that goes into the benefits and reasons why it's helpful to keep a food journal, especially at the beginning, and also my recommendations on how to go about doing that in the simplest possible way that has the least effort so that you're more likely to keep up with it. So the first reason to keep a food journal is basically because it's very likely to save you a lot of time in the long run to identify any kind of trigger foods and foods that don't cause symptoms earlier because then you can know what to eat more of and what to avoid right at the beginning versus experimenting for a longer period of time by just trying to rely on your own memory and your own kind of intuition. You'll be surprised how much easier it is to identify those things if you write everything down and you write your symptoms down. It just becomes way easier to identify patterns that way. On the days when you don't have any symptoms, you'll be able to also look at the foods that you've been eating and you'll have a chance to get a good sense of what you're eating on the days when you don't have symptoms and know that those are foods that are the most likely to be the ones that you're going to feel the best eating. So it's really helpful both for finding foods that are good to eat and for finding things to eliminate that are causing issues. In terms of tracking symptoms, which I also think is necessary when keeping this kind of food journal, I've found that it's also really helpful to find out how often you really are having symptoms. For example, you may be having some minor symptom that you don't pay much attention to and until you, until you start writing it down, you might not realize that it's happening every single day. And if it's happening every single day, that's more significant than you thought because you might not have realized that, you might have thought it was just an infrequent symptom. Furthermore, there might be some symptoms that are more noticeable, such as pain, and you think that you're having them a lot more often than you really are. And when you start tracking it, you realize, oh, I'm really only having pain every four days. I thought it was a lot more often than that. So you can really start to become aware of what your symptoms really are, how frequently they're happening, what time of day they're happening, and until you start to write them, write them down and really keep track of it and become more mindful, your perception of your symptoms might not actually be accurate and once you start writing them down you'll have a way clearer idea of what's really going on and that's also very valuable information. Another benefit of keeping a food and symptom journal is being able to track bowel movements. So a lot of the time when you're having digestive issues, your bowel movements will be a good indicator of when the symptoms are worse or better. For example, you can track if you have any kind of loose stool or constipation, or if you're eating certain foods that make food go through you really fast. And the act of writing down your symptoms itself can also be kind of like having a confidant. So you don't always want to complain about how you're feeling, but sometimes just expressing for example, oh, I have so much bloating right now and I'm really uncomfortable, you might not tell that to somebody in your life, depending on who you're around and what your relationship with that person is. But by having sort of a way to write that down and express it, it can actually make you feel better psychologically. Keeping a journal is often a good way to just express yourself in a safe environment. So besides the benefits uh, on your physical health, it can also be a benefit to your mental health to give yourself the opportunity to get out your feelings and to just take the practice of expressing yourself at all. So if you're a person that has a hard time talking about the things that you're going through in terms of your disease, it might also be a good opportunity for you to express your symptoms and what they are without actually having to tell another person about them and the benefit too is that 
in doing so, you're also working towards relieving yourself of those symptoms. This also makes you really consider more fully the things that you're eating, and it also makes you a lot more accountable to yourself for what you're eating because you have to write everything down. So I would definitely recommend doing this at the beginning of the diet if you haven't started yet because a lot of the times it can be easy to think to yourself, oh, what harm is it going to do? Or to kind of play some mind games, making excuses for yourself. But when you really have to write everything down and look back at it and even put the effort at all into writing it down, it makes you way more able to follow the diet that you're doing if you're doing a diet and it also really makes you accountable and honest with yourself about what you're eating and sometimes we don't notice how frequently we eat an unhealthy food for example like let's say chocolate or something else which you wouldn't be eating on one of these diets but let's even say fruit um, maybe you're eating five pieces of fruit every day without really realizing it because it's a habit but then when you write it down you realize oh i think i might be eating too much sugar from fruit and that might be one reason why i'm not having the results that i want for example so it really makes you accountable and aware of what you're eating and it makes it easier to stick to any diet that you happen to choose if you're doing a diet. And along those lines, it will also help show the results. So you may notice that you're only having symptoms every three days after two weeks on the diet. It might be that you're still having some symptoms, but they're less frequent. And by keeping track of your symptoms, you can really start to notice those patterns sooner and it might help you stick to it as well because you'll be able to look back and say, look how much stomach pain I had two weeks ago. It was happening every few hours and now it's only happening every few days, for example. So even if you still continue to have some symptoms, by looking back at what they once were, you might feel encouraged to continue because you can see that there's results. Another element that I think might be the most important of all is that you're building self-awareness by keeping a food and symptom journal. And self-awareness is really the most important tool that you can have on this whole healing journey, in my opinion, because self-awareness is going to help you make the right choices for yourself. It's going to help you accept your situation. It's going to help you accept whatever's going on, really. And it also gives you a really clear idea of what's really happening, what your symptoms really are, what you're really eating, and what kind of changes you can make. And also by learning those foods that are triggering for you, it's really empowering moving forward because you may not be on this kind of restricted diet forever. And by learning how to identify trigger foods because it's kind of, it becomes ingrained after a while, much more so than before you keep a food journal. Like you'll learn to really get more in tune with how you feel after eating, for example. The chances are moving forward, you're gonna be able to identify trigger foods and symptoms a lot more easily because you've put into practice being aware of it. What you're doing is you're teaching yourself to be aware of what you're eating and be aware of how it's affecting you and that's gonna serve you for the rest of your life because it's something that you've learned. It's self-awareness. Another thing I really like about keeping a food and symptom journal is that it empowers you to do something good for your own health. A lot of the time when you're diagnosed with either a digestive or an autoimmune disease, doctors are going to be of absolutely no use telling you what is going to be helpful and harmful to you that you're eating. In my case, the doctor told me there was absolutely no association between food and Crohn's disease, for example, and I was left to figure it all out by myself, and that is a very common scenario. So by deciding to track your food intake and your symptoms, you are learning how to basically take care of your own health and take that power back because Yes, the doctor can help you with certain things, but this is one area where they're very unlikely to be helpful to you, and it's an area that has a huge impact on health. Of course, 
what you eat has a very important impact on your body and even your mental health and definitely on autoimmune symptoms. And even though that's not in the mainstream doctor's handbook right now, there are clinical trials that very clearly show that. So by doing this, you're taking the health and your responsibility for your own health much more into your own hands. And instead of getting a hopeless situation where you're just going to be sick forever, you're deciding, I'm going to do something to improve my own health right now, and it's free. You can go to a million doctor's appointments, and probably they will never be able to give you the clear and helpful information that you can gain for free by yourself by just keeping a food journal. For example, all of your different intolerances, how much of certain foods you can eat without starting to feel tired or other kind of symptoms. You can learn that through keeping a food journal, or at least learn a lot about that by keeping a food journal. And a lot of the time, even if you spent thousands of dollars on medical care, they probably wouldn't be able to even give you that information. So this is something that anyone can do because it's free and you can do it for yourself without anyone needing to give you a prescription or tell you that it's possible. It's really a way that you can do something and serve yourself and, you know, have self-empowerment towards your own health. In my case, keeping a food journal was really helpful and I did it for the first 30 days that I was on a specific carbohydrate diet and it really helped me learn which foods I felt the best eating and which foods I needed to exclude even though they were specific carbohydrate diet friendly. And it also helped me track my symptoms and how many bowel movements I was having and it really got me going on the diet and it kept me very honest because I couldn't cheat on the diet without having to write it down. So there was no way I was going to be doing that. And that really set me up for success because it got me into the habit of being really accountable and paying really good attention to my symptoms. And after 30 days, I felt like I didn't really need to do it anymore because that kind of self-awareness had already been sparked by doing it for the first 30 days. But that could be different from person to person. So maybe you like it so much that you want to continue. So when I did it, I just wrote it down in a little notebook and I carried that little notebook everywhere with me because it's really important to write things down at the time that you're eating them because otherwise you might forget, especially if you just had a snack or something. If you left it all to the end of the day, you might forget that you ever ate it. So the food journal is going to be the most helpful if it's 100% accurate because then you're going to be able to notice those patterns the most easily, obviously, because if you forgot to write something down and it caused a symptom, you might not realize the pattern with that food as easily because it'll be missing from part of the time. And you might also inaccurately blame another food because you've missed something on the list. So I would recommend keeping whatever you're tracking your food with on you all the time so that you can write things down right away or within a reasonable amount of time so that you don't forget anything. Lately, I decided to do another food journal for myself because I was having some basically like bloating from something that I was eating at work. So I decided to track it again. And this time I decided to use an app because I thought I would probably make this video and I wanted to have a good suggestion for you guys about what app you could use for a food journal. And I downloaded three and I did a lot of research into what are available. And the best one that I ended up using was called Kara. So it's C-A-R-A and it's a blue app with a white circle. And I'll also write what it is in the description box and it's free. There was no perfect app, but this one, you didn't have to search foods, you could just type them out. It also had tracking for different symptoms such as you could track your bowel movements using the app and you could track uh, whether you had any pain. You could also take notes. So if you had any unique symptoms, you could easily track them in the note section. It also gave you options to track how your skin looked and what your mood was. So I found that it was a really comprehensive app that let you track a lot of different 
kinds of symptoms as well as your food all in one place. Some of the tracking features on my Android phone did not work as they were supposed to, but I found that it didn't really matter because I could just look back on each individual day and see for myself when I had symptoms. So I would definitely recommend using that app. Of course, you can look for yourself at what else is out there, but if you just want a good recommendation that you can just start with and not waste any time looking, I would definitely recommend using that one. And I really hope that this is helpful to you and can give you a really good sense of how to get started and hopefully as you track your symptoms you'll realize that there's less and less of them along the way and of course this is based on my own personal experience and is not medical advice however diet has been extremely helpful to a lot of people with autoimmune diseases the specific carbohydrate diet is the one that I did and the autoimmune paleo diet is also really popular and they're very similar. So this strategy would be really helpful to people who are following either of those or if you're not following any specific diet, this would also be helpful for just creating your own sense of what's good and, good and not good for you to eat. So no matter where you are on your healing, journey in regards to food and uh, digestion and autoimmunity, I think that this would be a really helpful thing to do for at least 30 days just to see the patterns that you find. And leave in the comments if you have any questions or video suggestions or ideas or any experiences keeping a food journal that you'd like to share. And thank you so much for watching. And if you liked this video, please let me know by pushing like. And if you want to see more of my videos, please subscribe. And all the best on your healing journey. Thanks for watching. Okay, bye.